Now, one of the biggest questions astrophysics has been addressing is what is dark matter? What is most of the universe made out of? Now, we know there's very large amounts of dark matter, but what actually is it? We believe it's some sort of non-baryonic particle, but what? Questions don't come much bigger than that. To help us address this question, it's a great pleasure to have Dr. Katie Mack from the University of Melbourne, who's a famous astro Twitterer at Astro Katie. We'll put the link below the video. She has a background in combining particle physics and astrophysics, and so she's the ideal person to tell us about what dark matter could actually be. Now, all over the world, Katie, there are experiments in caves uh, trying to measure dark matter particles as they fly through, mm -hmm. and some of these groups claim they've actually detected it. What do you make of this? I mean, I think it's, I think it's complicated, and I think it's difficult. The, the experiment is a very difficult one to do. You have to take your, your detector, put it deep underground to shield it from cosmic rays, and then you have to put in a lot of other shielding because of things like uh, nuclear decay in the walls of the, of the mine or whatever you're in. And so there are, a lot of, there are a lot of ways you can get confused and think that something bumping into something in your detector was a dark matter particle. And so this is, this is a, a very difficult uh, measurement. So what have these very difficult experiments actually found? Well, so there have been a number of different, uh, different results. And some, some experiments have found a signal that looks like a particle that could have been dark matter has come into the experiment and and bumped something within, within the target material. And that might be consistent with a dark matter particle coming in, but it could also be consistent with uh, some kind of background particle, some kind of cosmic ray, some kind of nuclear decay, anything like that. There's another experiment that's seen a, an, an annual modulation in their signals. They've seen a few more events at one time of year than another time of year. And that would be consistent with uh, dark matter being, uh, there being more dark matter when we're moving into the dark matter wind and less mo dark matter uh, when we're moving out of it. So basically, you know, we orbit the sun and the sun is going around the galaxy. And so sometimes we're moving toward the, the dark matter and sometimes we're moving away. So that might be a signal of dark matter, but it could also be something like uh, the backgrounds changing with the seasons, and we haven't figured that out yet. So there are a whole bunch of d different uh, signals. They may or may not be dark matter. They can't all be dark matter because they disagree with each other. And some, some of these experiments have to be showing us something other than dark matter or maybe just nothing at all. Now, one possible way to find out what dark matter would be would be that some theories suggest that dark matter particles actually would interact with other dark matter particles mm -hmm. and produce a photon, maybe a gamma ray or an X-ray or something like this. Now, this is most likely to happen where the dark matter is at its densest, which is actually in the, close to the middle of galaxies. Mm -hmm. Now, some people are claim, claiming to have seen these signals. What do right. you make of that? I think that, again, that's also really difficult. Um, the reason, the reason that's complicated is because the areas that are most dense in dark matter, like the center of the Milky Way, the center of other galaxies, center of galaxies, galaxy clusters, are also the places where there's a lot of astrophysics going on. Uh, our Milky Way center, for instance, has a number of stars, it has dust, it has pulsars, it has a supermassive black hole and accretion and, and various uh, kinds of outflows. And that's, uh, that's a really complicated area. And so trying to say that, trying to find a, an excess signal of something in the galactic center and say, oh, that must be dark matter, rather than just some kind of astrophysics we don't understand, that's a really difficult call to make. So we've seen excess gamma rays from the galactic center. We've seen excess X-rays from uh, centers of galaxy clusters. Uh, we've seen positrons coming from possibly all directions. And we don't know for sure whether these are this, a signal of some new physics, like dark matter, or some new astrophysics, like maybe a, a population of pulsars that we didn't know about before. Um, so that's another area where I think that there have been some really interesting clues, but we can't yet say if it's dark matter or if it's just something else that we don't understand. But this is an area where I think that in the next few years we can make a lot of progress because we can try and uh, really put together the the consequences in all different wavelengths for these kinds of uh, these kinds of interactions. So, if we say you know dark matter should give you a gamma ray signal, what would it tell you? What would you see in the X rays, or what would we see in radio or neutrinos? And getting that self consistency and really seeing what we expect in all different wavelengths is where we can really make progress in that. Now, both the sorts of observation we've talked about, looking for the effects of dark matter interacting with itself or with a uh, experiment somewhere in a mine rely on dark matter interacting via the weak force. Yeah. We know that dark matter interacts via gravity, otherwise we wouldn't know it's there. Mm -hmm. We 
No, it doesn't interact via either the strong or electromagnetic forces, or we would have seen it a long time ago. Mm -hmm. But do we actually know it interacts via the weak force? I mean, if it only interacted via gravity, we might never find out what it was. Yeah, this is uh, this is where the the theory is really only the only thing that's guiding us. We think that it has to interact via the weak force, mostly because uh, that's that's a way to produce dark matter in the early universe. So we we have we can calculate how dark matter would annihilate and and um, and come together and, and be produced by standard model interactions in the early universe. And if if the weak force is what's governing that, then as the universe expands and those interactions become less common, uh, like they're very uncommon today, then the amount of dark matter that would be left over after all those interactions have, have gone on and stopped would be about the right amount of dark matter to explain the dark matter we see now. And so that's that's sort of our, our theoretical bias that says that the weak, a weak force interaction makes a lot of sense. If it did interact with, only with gravity, I mean, that's not ruled out. Uh, we haven't seen any solid evidence for interactions of anything other than gravity, but it would be really hard to make dark matter that way. Um, we think that all the particles in the universe come out of the Big Bang, come out of this sort of early primordial soup, and the only way to get dark matter out of that would be if it did interact via something other than gravity with standard model particles. And so if it j was just gravity, we wouldn't have any way of getting the dark matter into the universe. It would have to be some very strange process where it just appears uh, through something we don't understand. So it makes much more sense if dark matter does have a weak interaction. Now, one of the, the claims made for the Large Hadron Collider at, mm -hmm. at CERN in Geneva is that it might be able to discover what dark matter is. Right. Could you explain that? Yeah, so there are two ways that that the LHC might give us some clue about dark matter. One would be just by seeing evidence of supersymmetry. So if, if, this, if supersymmetry exists, um, if there are supersymmetric partners of all of the, the fundamental particles of nature, then that would give us a, a clue that supersymmetry is the way to go and that um, and dark, dark matter could be a, a kind of supersymmetric particle and that would f sort of fit into that paradigm very well. Where, where are we up to now with the supersymmetry in the Large Hadron Collider? Well, at the moment we've seen nothing. We've seen no evidence for supersymmetry at all. And would so you have expected to at this point? We would. So it, it depends on the, the model of supersymmetry. There are some models that, uh, that are harder to find, um, but we're being pushed into more of those difficult models of supersymmetry, the less sort of simple models and therefore the less appealing models. So at the moment we don't really know. But the other way that, that the LHC could give us a clue for dark matter would be if the LHC were able to produce dark matter. Um, in the same way that dark matter particles can come together and annihilate and produce standard model particles, standard model particles might be able to come together and produce enough energy to make dark matter particles. And so what you would look for in the LHC would be a proton collision where you have the collision, you count up all the energy of all the particles that come out, and there's something missing. And that would be a clue that maybe a dark matter particle was produced and escaped the detector completely because it didn't interact with anything, any of the uh, instruments. So we're looking for that missing energy signature. Unfortunately, we haven't seen that yet either. So at the moment, the LHC is only giving us sort of limits on what dark matter could be, but it hasn't given us any evidence for the particle itself. So it looks like we've got three possible ways to discover what dark matter is. Mm -hmm. uh, experiments in the mines, looking for some sort of signal from um, astrophysics, or the Large Hadron Collider. Yeah. Combining all these three, what, what's your personal gut feeling? Do you think 10 years from now, I mean, hold a backup interview, we'll know what dark matter is? I do think so. I, I do think so. I may be optimistic, but I think that in the next couple of years, we'll have a much better idea of what to do with the direct detection experiments. We'll, we're, having, we're building new experiments that will uh, do directional detection, so they'll be able to tell you which direction the, the particle came from, if there is dark matter coming through. That'll give us a lot of really infor important information. Um, we're also doing more observations of uh, signals in the sky, and we're going to follow up on all the ones we've seen and figure out if those might be dark matter. And the LHC is going up to higher energies, which might help. Maybe we'll see it in the LHC. So I, I do think that in the next 10 years we'll, we'll know. Um, there's a chance that we won't if we're very unlucky, and if the dark matter is, is a lot harder to detect than we expected, then we won't see it. But I think we'll, we'll at least have a much better idea of if it could be supersymmetric or if it, it could be one of the other theories that, that's been 
going around? So let's say we're pessimistic and okay. uh, it manages to evade the direct detection experiments because, I don't know, its interaction cross-section is wrong or its mm. energy is wrong. Um, it doesn't annihilate with each other, again, because of a low cross-section um, and supersymmetry, no evidence for that shows up. And okay. well, Would supersymmetry be dead if no evidence shows up after the upgrade? It wouldn't be dead, it would be painted into a very ugly corner. Yeah, so severely injured but not dead, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but if we're pessimistic and say that's the case, where would we go from now? Can we make the direct detection experiments a thousand times better? Or? Unfortunately, there's a limit to what you can do with direct detection because if you, if if dark matter interacts with a small enough cross section, then we'll never be able to see it in in ordinary direct detection because uh, it'll be drowned out by the signal of neutrinos bouncing off of the things in your detector. And neutrinos, you can't get rid of those. Um, but that's where... Short of several million kilometers of lead. Right. Uh, but that's where in directional detection helps. So uh, the direction the neutrinos come from should not necessarily be the same as the direction of the dark matter comes from. We, there's, there are certain directions where we're on a, on a planet going around a sun moving through a cloud of dark matter. And so we should be able to see a difference in the, the amount of dark matter coming from the direction of where we're moving through the other direction. So directional detection should help. Um, and, you know, but it, there's, there's no point in just continually building bigger and bigger detectors without directional detection because at some point they don't do you any, that doesn't do you any good. Great. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome.